Have you seen Stranger Things? These guys are 11. How about Scooby Doo? That's our cutest Scooby Now I want some Scooby Snacks. Kids on Bikes is somewhere in the middle of that, depending on your group and preferences. While the title is Kids on Bikes, the game doesn't require to be children nor on bicycles. But could I be a pesky kid on a bike if I wanted to? Of course. Good. The only real setting necessities are that the location is small and remote and takes place before everybody had cell phones and cameras readily available. So basically just kind of like when we actually were kids on bikes. The rules first and foremost make a point to establish what everybody is comfortable with thematically. This is always good upkeep with strangers, but if you know the group, you can probably forgo this. Aww. Aww. This game encourages a lot of collaborative creation, but where we're all just learning this, most of the content has been prepared by the GM. And I'll review the rules as we go. For creating a world together, they discuss going around the table and adding parts of the town. Oh, well, I mean, I guess I'll start. We're gonna call the town Nateberry. And the school mascot is the Goose. Goose! Exactly. Really fleshing out a city could easily take hours once you get into the people living there. You were right on on adding the town name. Now let's say Billy adds a major festival, uh, Josh, the name of the town, uh, Tony starts adding the decade. Maybe you start adding characters like the town locksmith, who is a Russian immigrant and was once a professional hockey player. If you're more comfortable with a full team effort, the rules support that. That sounds dangerous. A clutter of town could really look like a circus, or where you actually live. Which I guess could be a circus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, but what do you need to play? Each player should have a character sheet which are available for free from the creators at renegadestudios.com. At least a pencil, uh, ideally two note cards per player, but you could really just use scrap paper. Okay, what about dice? You will need the standard breakdown of dice. I mean, D20, D12, D10, D8, D6, D4, which will match up with your character's attributes, which are brawn, brain, fight, flight, charm and grit, but we'll circle back to that. All right, fair enough. When creating your character, you'll first decide your age, which is sort of the race equivalent of other role-playing games. It will affect one of your inherent abilities, as well as narrow which tropes you can choose from, which are like the class equivalent of other role-playing games. Okay. So for example, being the popular kid, uh, would be exclusive to children or teens, while being a blue-collar worker would be exclusive to adults. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if I wanted to be a kid and a blue-collar worker? I mean, when Grandpa was a kid, he walked 15 miles in the snow. And then we'd walk 15 miles in the snow to... Both ways uphill just to get to the button factory. <laughs> this isn't a cartoon. This is serious. You're right. This is serious. I'M BEING SERIOUS! You will then select one of these tropes, which give you your stat breakdown. Your abilities will have a coinciding die with each ability. Okay. So, say you are amazing at fight. Yeah. Anytime you make a skill check that could be considered fight, you would use a d20. You will only be amazing at one skill and decline in each stat by a die. Okay, so say a skill I'm great at but not amazing would be like a d12? Precisely. All the way down to a d4. Oof. I hope that's not one of my skills I would actually need in life. <laughs> um, but uh, what do these dice really mean though? Whenever you attempt something with the possibility of failure, as determined by your game master, you will make a skill check. This is a difficulty assigned by your game master. For example, a check of 20 is something insane, once in a lifetime achievement. Like winning a Pulitzer. Hmm, or like lifting a car. The next tier down would be breaking a school record, all the way down to a one to two being a nearly guaranteed success. <laughs> like making dinner. <laughs> your level of success is then measured by the difference in your roll. If you roll exactly the difficulty, say a difficulty of five, and you roll a five, that means you succeed with no surprises, good or bad. But wait, my relevant skill is only a d4, so why even bother? This is because dice can explode! Oh my god. <laughs> Let me clarify. 
Uh, what that means is if I roll a four on a d4, I can then re-roll it and add the number to it, which would allow success on a check of five. This can happen multiple times. Okay, all right, I see that. So it's kind of like a chain reaction of luck. Right. Now let's say the difficulty is five and you roll a 15. Wow, I mean, that's amazing. You succeed with flying colors, you're basically just showing off. <laughs> well, I wrote all the answers to my homework with, you know, my feet and I didn't even look. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's really flashy. Dare I ask what happens in the opposite situation? Ooh, the difficulty is set to 20 and you just rolled a three. Oof, we're talking literally game changing. You tried to perform surgery on your friend's wound and it's bad. I mean, it's horribly infected. There's a nasty scar. You may no longer be friends. Well, there is a reason I fix computers and not people. Um, but you know what? If I can get through Tony setting my socks on fire in real life, that happened. He set them on fire while I was sleeping. I'm sure he could get through a botched surgery job from me. Uh, did you purposefully botch Tony's surgery job? Mm. Never mind. Uh, fear not, however. When you fail, you also acquire adversity tokens. These can be used to add dice to rolls or aid allies at the GM's discretion. So failing isn't necessarily bad, it's just the way the narrative is moving. Okay. There are a few other benefits to using them listed in the manual. Well, that's all well and good, but like, what's going on with all this stuff down here? Ah, yes. Uh, so looking at the bottom of the character sheet, there are boxes with checks next to them. These are twofold as role-playing guidelines and added bonuses. We're not going to spoil all of these here, uh, but if you're gross, you might possibly be able to belch on command and it smells. <laughs> all right, so are we ready? The final thing you need to know, which is very cool, is about the powered character. <laughs> yeah. If you thought my burping on command was mighty, you'll be really blown away by my ability to... Actually, there is someone who is shared amongst the group, depending on characteristics. This is where the aforementioned note cards might make playing a little bit easier. The Game Master will give out two characteristics to each person sitting around the table. You may make these up or take advantage of the examples laid out in the manual. Let's say, obsessed with sneakers is given to Nate, and scared of the color orange is given to Tony. And these are two of the power character's characteristics. So this sounds like actual kids today. Uh, I have control over his Jordans or something like that. So if Tony thinks it makes sense for our power character to fawn over a stranger's new shoes, he will tap that characteristic in front of you. Ultimately, you have narrative control here, and you could ignore Toby tapping it, but group play is encouraged. Fine. The powered character starts distracting the stranger by asking a million questions about his sneakers. But, oh no, the stranger pulls up his pan leg and reveals orange socks. Tony knows this falls on him and taps his own note card and starts screaming in fear. That's amazing. Wait, uh, why is this person called the powered character? <laughs> That's because actual supernatural powers could be on the note cards. Oh. Billy happens to have the note card that says fly. The GM will give the group PK tokens, uh, which are basically the amount of times you can use these powers without needing to rest. When failing a check with a powered character, they'll suffer some minor side effects like their eyes tearing up or a nose bleed, uh, and the player can use more PK tokens until success, at which point the GM would say you can't spend any more. Uh, a cool way to reveal powers is to hold off on handing out those no cards until an application arises where those powers seem necessary. Okay, all right, that, that, fair enough. And, and I like that because it's a collaborative effort. Everybody in front of them has their own note card and you know they're, they're, they're also playing that powered character. I like it. So those are the basics. Welcome to Kids on Bikes. Hey guys, Nate here. If you like what you're about to see, be sure to check out the episode of the Deejcast that drops tomorrow. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or really anywhere you find your podcasts. Check it out. Uh, so Winnetucket, Minnesota. 
The year is 1990, far to the north of Minnesota, set off within the Vermilion Mountain Range, and it hides the small town of Winnetucket. It's a place where everybody knows everybody. The same families have resided here for generations, and new arrivals trickle in from Ontario, Canada to the north, or Lynxfield to the south. While Lynxfield is 10 miles to the south, fortunately, Winnetucket is mostly self-perpetuating. The town is surrounded by trees in every direction, providing plenty of firewood for the chilly temperatures. A great lake lies within walking distance to the northeast, where water is filtered for easily accessible drink. Crops of corn, barley, wheat, and peas flourish, providing plenty to fill their bellies and make passable beer for their troubles. What other crops do grow last for years due to the leading nationwide experts of pickling. Most adults know their way around a firearm and how to dress game after a hunt for both food and clothing. When it comes to trading, the number one resource desired throughout Minnesota and other surrounding states is refined iron and steel from the mining company. So the typical layout for like building a world is like these eight things I'll just say for you. Um, so the adventure takes place in Winnetucket, Minnesota. The industry is best known for its iron ore and refinement. The town is famous for Pickle Palace, home of national pickling champions. The town is infamous for high rates of bear attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Economically, the town is prosperous. A notable local organization is Loon Goons, an all-senior citizen town watch. Uh, a notable local landmark is Crabapple Hollow, a dense thicket of crabapple trees where you can't see more than 10 feet in front of you. And the school sports team, the mascot is the bear, which is especially scary because of all the vicious bears that are actually around. Gonna say that. Okay. Any other questions before I get started? Do we want to go around and introduce our characters? Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Let's... All right. Well, I am Nelson Nelson Jr. I am eight years old. I have a fear of bugs and heights. Um, motivated by trying to keep hidden the fact that my father is a complete loser. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he's he's kind. He can be rather patron patronizing. Um, he stands only about like four feet tall. Um, just flaming red hair that he generally keeps short um, and spiked, because that's what cool kids do. Um, lots of freckles. Um, generally will wear a t-shirt of whatever band he's currently obsessed with right now. It's, uh, Hanson. Mmm. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh. I am Nelson Nelson Sr. I am 45 years young. <clears throat> I fear the government. My motivation is as an archaeologist, finding old artifacts and connecting them to the long lost secrets of old civilizations. I'm paranoid, superstitious, and irrational. Uh, I'm tallish, lanky, slight, red hair, and twitchy. So, Chad Breckenheimer, 17, I like working out a lot. Kind of self-centered and reckless, but I'm also kind of loyal at the same time. Uh, I'm a varsity baseball player. State champs, baby. Woo! Uh, yeah. It's me. Go Bears. Wait, Go what, Bears. what was your sport? Baseball. 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 All right. I am Sean Breckenheimer. I'm uh, his little brother. I'm, I'm 10. I'm in, I'm in Nelson Jr.'s class. He's eight. I stayed back a little bit. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not stupid. I'm just a smart ass. So, you know, it got me in trouble a lot. Um, but yeah, his, uh, he's a little bit, I'm a, I'm a little bit too naive. Um, I can be kind of talked into things a little too easily. Um, 
but yeah, yeah, typically wearing, you know, like... That's why we're best friends. <laughs> exactly. Perfect treasure ferret. <laughs> Um, you know, curly, curly hair, um, usually wears a baseball hat, um, you know, t-shirt, jeans, something like that. Um, but yeah, just, just kind of like a little rug rat. Um, he's pretty loyal, um, relatively laid back, easy going. Um, yeah, that's, that's Sean Breckenheimer. You go, little bro. Yeah. Go Bears. Uh, so... <laughs> What are your parents like? You don't have a. What the Breckenheimers like? I don't know. Uh, they're see. supportive. They're good. Yeah. Pa- they're good parents. They're pretty typical. Yeah, we'll, we'll average just, parents. Yeah, we'll just say like a typical average, like you know, like white picket fence family. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, another thing that you guys will have is your backpack. So this is what you carry with you, literally and figuratively at all times. So, what do you have in your backpack? Right now, I probably have a bunch of mixtapes and blank CDs ready to pass out to friends. Nice. You could also just have like musical knowledge. The backpack isn't like a literal backpack that's on Uh, you. It's uh, like it's presumed things that like you carry with you. So we'll say like, you know, you're. I I feel like the the one of the reasons why why Nelson Jr. is is popular is because he's the only one who's figured out LimeWire. So (laughs) he's he's supplying most of the the kids and teenagers with all the the new music. (laughs) Nice. Do we have, are we actually have Rip like burn CDs at this point? Pro- yeah. Probably a lot of. 1990? 90, yeah, I think CDs were around in the 90s. Well, yeah. Probably yeah. not as popular. Most most of it's probably all, all mixed like cassette tapes that were made with two boom boxes right in front of each other, just one playing and one hitting record. Yep. It's probably what most of the stuff is. I'm probably starting to get into CDs as I'm. As a well, I don't know what my father does for work these days. <laughs> does he? Uh, I'm an archaeologist. <laughs> they discovered the world's greatest treasures. Yeah, so and, being and kind of slow right now. <laughs> the world's deepest mysteries. Good luck to find in that Minnesota. <laughs> I just need to find a sponsor <laughs> for my valuable research. But what do I carry? Uh, history buff. Spent a lot of time in the library researching the history of the town specifically, so I have all that knowledge and a good knowledge of the local geography because of that as well. Yeah, probably. So you probably also just like have like small trinkets on you at all times. Okay. Maybe yeah. Not. I, I, no, I definitely yeah. would. Like a magnifying mean, glass. Uh, yeah. The, the little brush. I, I didn't know. Well, you said it was figurative, so now I'm confused. It's it's both, like okay. literal and figurative. Okay. So yeah, I would have like the backpack itself isn't a literal thing that you as an adult like carry around at all times, unless you unless you want it to be. But just, just like yes, it's I a fanny pack. But just <laughs> like <laughs> look at my archaeological tools. Yeah. So you could like it would make sense for you to just lug around your tools. You never know when a treasure might present itself. He has a set of tools in the basket in front of his bicycle. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah, and then, like, you know, like, Lucas on Stranger Things, like, always has his slingshot on him. You know, yeah. like, he doesn't carry in a backpack, but it's it's readily available. I got you. So I, 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 I do magnifying glass, flashlight, a small shovel, like a little spade, a uh, brush, like an archaeologist would have. Uh, a collapsible metal detector. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, you're like eccentric enough where I think, yeah, yeah. You, maybe like strap it to your back. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, collapsible. Um, and uh, uh, a small map book where okay. I've written in various things theories and places I've dug in the surrounding area. Perfect. Um, that's one. 
You have to come back to me. There's one more I was thinking of that jumped out of my head. Okay. Chad. What up, bro? <laughs> Got my, well, I'd have like a baseball, like all baseball kind of attire. So like I'd have a bat, glove, like just the actual baseball. Um, I work out a lot, so I'd have like proper lifting techniques. Mm. So I'd know how to like lift heavy things if need be. Lift with your knees, bro, not your back, man. Um, have my car keys on me. I love my car. I got a nice uh, Camaro. Um, got that old uh, muscle car. And I got a comb that I always got to look good. Nice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'll probably, um, in the notebook, uh, I have some notebooks. Um, got action figures because my guy, Sean, is obsessed with action figures as well as wrestling. I'm just going to throw that in there. Why not? Um, carry a walk- walkie talkies. Uh, duct tape. Um, he's also very into electronics, so um, you know maybe like small set of tool, like screwdrivers or something to take stuff apart. Um, yeah, that's about it. He's not going to carry around a whole lot. Okay, cool. And one more thing that I want from each of you is a rumor about the town. From each of us. Mm-hmm. Okay. be anything. It can be the craziest thing you could ever think of. The reason for the high amount of bear attacks is because of the scent that the pickle factory produces. It attracts the bears. Uh, The pickled bananas are really not pickled bananas, and they're actually human flesh. (laughs) That's awesome. This is all rumors about Pickle Palace. Yes. Uh, the government part of the boring operations in the area were sparked by the government years ago searching for us. So they supposedly found some sort of special, unique uh, type of metal or element that's either alien or just undiscovered. Some unknown material. Yeah. Or unknown. Underneath the pickle palace? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm not sure where. I think okay. it's somewhere near where the mines are. It's they're connected in some way, I think. Excellent. Um, okay, so rumor the federal government is actually funding the pickle factory because there's a um, ingredient, secret ingredient in the pickles that's possibly causing the people of the town to get sick or something. We're a uh, experimental town because we're in the middle of nowhere, basically. And everyone likes pickled bananas for some reason. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so, it's Friday morning. Is it a school day? It is indeed a school day. Um, Sean and Nelson Jr. and probably Nelson Sr. are (laughs) on their way uh, riding their bike slash driving. No, I don't have a license. Okay, so you're also on a bicycle? Yes. (laughs) Excellent. And, 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 and Chad like a, a big fat tired like mountain bicycle that I, I don't take off the road <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and uh, Chad do you, do you typically drive to school or do you just keep yeah, that baby bro. polished up yeah so so Chad beats everyone to school uh, the school itself is actually shared it's both like it's all grades all in one giant area and yeah k through 12 uh the facilities house everything like hockey ranks swimming pool giant football field baseball field is there a separate town library or is it located within the school the town (laughs) in the school (laughs) uh and, and it is like a quite extensive library that okay. that you've added to yeah. personally. I spend a, a lot of time there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like if you look at every. That's how all the kids know me. Yeah. He's so cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's so cool. Whenever any kid goes to like check out a book in the car, you definitely see Nelson Nelson Senior's signature there multiple times. I'm constantly lying about adventures I didn't have, like <laughs> making myself out to be Indiana Jones when I'm nothing like it. Nelson Junior's is all the time like, yep, yeah, Dad, whatever you say. You totally did that. <laughs> so where you guys are best friends and you're just in hot pursuit. Um, so the three of you are all riding to school. I'm like cluelessly riding behind them. <laughs> I didn't even realize that's his own child in front of him. I'm in, yeah, I'm just constantly in my own machinations. So the, the three of you on bicycles, Chad whips by in his sweet ass Camaro. And, <laughs> and, at, and at that point you hear a, a voice shout out, Slow down, you punk! So you all see, all look over, you see old cranking butts in his biker jacket on his motorcycle, putting along five miles per hour. You're actually like catching up to him on your bicycles. And he's sitting there, he's just mean mugging. And he's so he's, he's furious with Chad now. And then he kind of gives the three of you this like mean look, but narrows his eyes. Apparently passes test though. He looks away and he starts puttering off in another direction. <laughs> so, uh, then also you see passing by you is Deputy Troy with a huge smile on his face, which you know Deputy Troy to be like a grumpy dude. And it looks like he's driving a new car. Uh, so he whips by the three of you, doesn't pay any attention. I give him the stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> Highly suspicious. So he- And disapproving car. of new vehicles since I ride a bicycle. <laughs> So he's he's oblivious to your, your mean mug. He's just like, you know, all sunshine, like ah, da, da, he's driving away. Okay, so since he since he approves old cranking butts and Deputy Troy is oblivious, so the two of them go off in other directions, don't stop you. You arrive at St. Barbara School, which encompasses K through twelve, as all of you know. Uh, includes a massive wing for trade schooling. Uh, all of you are on time. You see Vice Principal Geraldine at the entrance with her open ruler, just waiting. You know that some poor sap, sir. I'm gonna get the, the ruler today. I give her a cheery morning greeting. She's actually quite friendly with you. Of course. Yeah. I cower a little bit. <laughs> I give her a sweet childish smile. So <laughs> I pat Nelson Jr. on the shoulder. So she looks over at the two of you. Yeah. Good, good morning, Mr. Nelson. Little Nelson. Hi, ma'am. Vice Principal. Uh. She's, <laughs> she senses the fear. <laughs> Vice Principal. Do I need to pat you down, Sean? Are you bringing any illegal no. tools into the school? No, I get, I get nothing. Not, I get nothing. I can not for a ma'am. Alright. Looks back at the entrance, waiting for more people. You can just a clear view of the road, just waiting. As soon as she looks away, you can just see like, you can just see like, I just completely like, um... Total relief. Total relief, thank yeah. you. That's the word I was looking <laughs> So, uh, so at this point, I... Says Nelson Sr. as we walk through the halls. <laughs> <laughs> so then, the, the, the three of you are all going to the same class, then, or are you veering off to the library? I'm going to the library. Okay. So you so with yeah, we with, probably go to our home room right or wherever we're supposed to go. Yeah. So you veer off. Chad's walking through the school, looking all sweet. The little kids like they like personally know you since the little brothers in class. They go to give you high fives. What's up, little man? Oh yeah, so cool. They love it. They love the high fives back. What's up, bro? They see they see uh, Hello, Mr. Nelson coming along. Call, they call him Doctor Nelson. Children, please <laughs> off to do very important work. Don't let it go to your head, father. <laughs> Keep up the good work, sir. What treasures are you gonna find today? I'm hoping to find. <laughs> I I'm hot on. <laughs> uh, I'm hot on the case of. Uh, Noah's Ark. Noah's <laughs> Ark. <laughs> <laughs> Your deep, 
debunking the myth of Noah's Ark, or are you actually searching for the real Noah's Ark? No, I've, by reading uh, several verses of the Bible backwards, I've surmised <laughs> a new location of the Ark. <laughs> and <laughs> using the numbered verses, I've determined it could be the latitude and longitude <laughs> of its location. Wow, Noah's Ark in our woods? That's amazing. Could be. You're so smart, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> Dr. Nelson. Bro, bro, don't, don't. <laughs> Any yeah, day now, I'll bro. be finding it. <laughs> All right, cool. So the so the, the younger students, uh, they have science first period. Dr. Ne- uh, Dr. Audette is, is sitting there on his desk. On the desk. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's uh he's a very busy man, so he's like ready to leave at a moment's notice. He's th- he's there basically just to to quickly get out the the day's learning, and he doesn't really actually pay attention to what the students learn. He just spews scientific stuff, hoping for retention, and then bails. So um, no <laughs> Yeah. So first period science. Doctor Audet's lecture is about. Metal sulfide oxidation, using pyrite as an example. Pyrite, FES2, is ex- when it's exposed to air, O2, and water, H2O. A sequence of reaction occurs, creating sulfate, ferric hydroxide, and hydrogen ions. Additional chemical reactions occur involving pyrite, iron sulfate, and water, resulting in the release of sulfuric acid. Interesting, right? Dr. Oh. El- Dr. <laughs> Dr. Audet then leaves the class abruptly. Uh, right in the middle of this lecture. So at this point, yeah, I think possibly, uh, you know, we'll make a, a couple checks for for retention of this knowledge. Oh. This is the brains. Uh, so so it's, brains. yeah, you tell me, you're making oh. brains checks? Um, yeah, yeah, I would probably make a brains check to brains. write down notes appropriately. Mm-hmm. Roll seven, not a V8. All right. So, I'm going to rule that as a negative three. (laughs) You fail, but not too badly. Um, (laughs) I remember some of it. I got a six. A six. All right. You're actually in the same pool. So both of you... We were talking in class. Yeah, you were chatting in class. You, You know he's saying something about chemical reactions, maybe the word pyrite sticks in your head. Uh, I probably wrote down all the, the like, Fe for, for the iron and all the, the formula for it, but I just didn't didn't write down exactly what everything was, though. Yeah. So now he's, now he's left class, shut the door. You're just unsupervised children in class now. And class was supposed to continue. Mm-hmm. How much more time do we have in this class? Yeah, so you got like another twenty minutes of class left. I'm gonna reach in, uh, reach in my backpack and pull out some action figures and uh, some walkie talkies. And I'm gonna just start like have the wrestling figures. I'm just gonna have like a wrestling match on my desk. I put one walkie talkie down and I'm like announcing the match through the walkie talkie. <laughs> so yeah. That's what I'm doing. Okay. This is why I'm your only friends. <laughs> I know. So all the all the kids wanted to chat up Nelson Jr. Do you, do you go by Nelson Jr.? Um, I feel like you wouldn't. Only, no, I only would, around Nelson Senior. I would probably go. What would I go by? Nell. Nell doesn't sound good. Um, Nelly. Nelly. I go by Nelly. All right. So yeah, all, so all the students start gathering around Nelly, um, and a couple, a couple of them start talking about zombie-like deer living out in the forest. Did you, did you know that there were some zombie deers found by the hunting party? How did you know they were zombies? That's uh, that's I heard that from from Mr. Dingle that he found zombies out in the woods. How did you know they were zombies? I don't know, I just believed it. What do you think? Well, I mean... Zombies are fake, so... Not that. <laughs> just then, the doors kicked in. You see... The... The four foot five... Mean mugging Timmy Taxel... Start walking in. 
He, lo- he walks right up to Sean. I heard these walkie talkies out in the hall. He just takes one. This is uh, mine now. Uh, you, but but the Macho Man was about to win. He he slaps Macho Man off the desk. <laughs> Could I use charm to defuse the situation and take the walkie-talkie back? All right, yeah. Let's, so let's I'll walk see. over and to what was the bully's name again? Timmy Taxel. Timmy. <laughs> so Timothy, can I call you Timothy? Thank you. Um, these are actually my walkie-talkies, and so I'm gonna have to ask you to put them back. <laughs> so with my bonus for being a charming child that's a 15 15 wow alright Nelly yes, yes I can give you back your walkie I, I mean I was just letting him borrow it oh, alright I get it you take, he whips the other one I mean, away oh, from you and, and I pull out the, the tape that I was making for him Thanks so much. Thank so yeah, he, so he grabs the second walkie-talkie, he hands it to you, takes the tape, and then he, he starts walking out the class, just looks back, eyes everyone else, and then he slams the door behind him. The walkie-talkie that's in my hand now, and just like, oh, it's left the room. <laughs> you got that right. How loud did he slam the door? Oh, real loud? Oh, loud enough for me to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna patrol the hallway wondering what was so loud. I'm was trying to put Macho Man down shot? together. <sighs> okay, so I'll, I'll have you roll on that. Have me? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, <laughs> hmm. I guess that would be Brain then? To put it back together? Um, hmm. Well, I can't charm it back together. Um, you could talk somebody yeah, else. You could charm somebody into, else into fixing it. In. That's true. I could. Um, in that case, actually, I'm going to hold off until he gets in the room. Okay. So you ent- you enter the hallway. You see Timmy Taxel there, and with just like holding his like new tape, and he's pulling out some headphones from his pocket. I, I'm intimidated by Timmy Taxel. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just keep my eyes down when I walk by him. <laughs> so, so you walk by him, and that, but fortunately, you see Vice Principal Geraldine, right? Like, whip out into the hall. And she's, and she's what was that noise? I don't know. I was just coming to investigate myself. So, so she sees Timmy there. Oh, I, I don't know. I think it was this guy. No, that's impossible. I was in the library. So just, and I never make noise in a library. <laughs> so that's the rules. Yeah, based based on your reputation with with Vice Principal Geraldine, she, she's just inclined to believe you. Timmy, we talked about this. You see her pull out the the open ruler. So do you do you st- stand to watch or do you like go into the classroom? No, I keep I keep moving. Okay, and. I would peer into the classroom, or upon is that is it an open? Is it a glass door? Is so it a what full, door? With full uh, what door? The window. Full window. Yeah. So I see no teacher in there when I walk by. So I decide it's an excellent opportunity to educate the youth um, <laughs> and impress my son. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so I I see. There, is there an element chart up there? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so I burst into the room and uh, uh, I asked him where the teacher is. Oh, uh, where'd Dr. Ardeck go? I don't know. He's uh, kind of left. He's gone. Maybe no he worries. Leave. I'll pick up the torch and I'm going to walk It's over. really not necessary, Dad. I'm sure he'll be back any moment. Maybe he should go to the bathroom. Well, you kids shouldn't be left attended, unattended by an adult. I feel responsible. I see you guys are learning the elements today. I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear my new theory on the table of elements. I raise my hand. Yes, uh, Sean. What element is duct tape? Don't encourage him. 
And you see me take out duct tape to try and like put Macho Man back together. Like his legs fell off from you know getting slapped on the ground. Hmm. It's not time for toys now. Pay attention, Junior. <laughs> this is an important, yes, sir. important lesson on the elements. You won't soon forget. Uh, and then I'm going to whip. Uh, there's a chalkboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to start rearranging the elements in some crazy Alphabetical theory. Order. Yeah. Um, no, he just he puts them into the uh, the design of like a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm whipping off wild theories about it that is totally going over the kids' heads. Yeah, but I'm I'm, just, I'm now sitting in the very back of the classroom, just like hands and. Like just head in my hands, just like uh, my dad. I'm clearly <laughs> in my element and just ambling happily about this nonsense. Okay, so how badly do you want the students to retain this information? Oh, it's important. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> real bad. Like yeah. I'm doing a service here. <laughs> All right, so so how do you want to to, to approach this? <clears throat> so I'm a uh, I'm not going to use charm. I'm pretty brainy, so I think the power of what I'm saying is going to be enrapturing to them. So it'll be a brain, uh, I'll use a brain roll for it. Okay. Your ability to portray it in a way that 8 and 10 year olds can understand. Uh, 11. Eight and 8 10. <laughs> yeah, 8, <laughs> eight year olds and a 10 year old. <laughs> okay. And 10 year old. Oh. Okay. No, I'm smart. I'm smart. What am I talking about? Yeah, so the... So the students are actually like fairly engrossed in this lecture. Of course. And so, n- <laughs> so now they're they're all talking. What's what's your new element? I'm not talking about a new element. I'm just making some theory about how the letters in the elemental chart can. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's like, why do you think that iron is represented by FE? That doesn't make any sense. It's a governmental scheme. Beautiful. <laughs> all right. So, so now you have a, a room full of eight-year-olds, all just like nodding in agreement that the, the government has the government's bad. The, the government has arranged the alpha uh, the periodic <laughs> the table. periodic table in just like the an incorrect way in order to brainwash them. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so we'll pause here. Dr. Odette is now in the high school room where Chad is, and he starts spewing off the exact same lecture. He just walks in the room and is just talking. Doesn't say like anything else, just enters. Is there any other teacher in here? So, <laughs> <laughs> does he just randomly walk Midwest. into random rooms and just start teaching? <laughs> so, or is so, he teaching? Is he. Switching his classes around. No, so you actually have French class right now with Mr. Bouchard. So he's sitting there like talking with French and, and Dr. Adet just walks into the room and just okay. and just starts talking over him. He like and Mr. Bouchard just starts stuttering, uh, uh, I I don't think this is your class right now. Dr. Adet ignores him and just walks in front of him. It's like very obviously. And then he he reads off the exact same thing to you. Which I can repeat for you if you'd like. Uh, no. I mean, I guess I can try to retain it. Okay, it'll be uh, it'll be easier for you to retain it. The check will be. Difficulty will be lower. Because I'm older, I guess. Even though I'm like, alright. All right, I've gone through the appropriate science classes. <laughs> right. Alright. I mean, we're, we're in either. second grade, so. <laughs> yeah, three. <laughs> three. I'm dumb, man. <laughs> <laughs> My so, lowest, so. Yes. Dumb job. Okay, so yeah, you, you barely, <laughs> you so you fail overall. You you retain some stuff, like oh, he said something about pyrite and uh, exposure about wow, air. What are talking about, man? It's, it's especially confusing with Mr. Bouchard standing there with French all on the chalkboard. Uh, French iron. <laughs> so then, and then once more, Doctor Adet just abruptly leaves. Uh, okay. So Mr. Bouchard goes back to his French lecture, uh, which at this point, I guess, would, I don't really know French per se, but you've, you've learned plenty of French at this point. Uh, so I'll say it's 
Well, actually, we'll make a check, too. We'll make a check of what you retain from this. Oh, uh, gosh, okay. So, you oh, brains. Okay. Yep. I mean, I got nothing at all. This puny, puny brain. <laughs> you need to hit a four, basically. Nice. Oh, yeah. A one. So, actually, since you're, well, I'm assuming you're very brawny. Yeah. So, you, you, you could always, like, intimidate someone else into taking, like, exquisite notes, notes for you, you yeah, could. that you then just take. You don't have to do that. It's just saying, you know, there are other options. Can I try to charm some good notes? Oh yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. So five. <laughs> All right. So. I'm not as charming as I think I am. <laughs> he just goes over. He's like, "Could I have your notes? <laughs> Give me notes now, please. I'm good at baseball. <laughs> the next hits for you. Okay. No, I like that. If, let's take the. <laughs> I really want you to succeed at this. <laughs> <laughs> so you give like a you give like a little flex and like you like look over at like just a generic group of students. You're not eyeing anyone in particular, but this this next one's for you. Like, well, I want I want my, you to take some good French notes for me. So let's yeah, let's make one more brawn check. Alright. Let's see how this one goes. One. Three. <laughs> Well, four, right? Four, four, yeah, because plus one. All right, so, okay, so this is kind of how it goes. So you look to look to your right, and you you like look over at the chalkboard. Sorry, you look at the chalkboard, and you're like real confused with Doctor Odette interrupting it. You're like mixing notes, like, oh, is pyrite a French word or is that a science word? Uh, so then you look to your right, you like give like a nice smile. <laughs> Just kind of like, hey, like, can I borrow some of your notes after class? And it's just kind of like, not not like flat out rejection, but mm, <laughs> uh, take your own notes. It's kind of like the, the vibe you're getting. So <laughs> to your left, I'm going to hit this next one for you. And once more, it's just kind of like, pay attention, dude. <laughs> I don't like baseball. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's like I don't really care for baseball. <laughs> so overall, you you end up with a mix of science and French notes jumbled together. Uh, so your your French is mediocre at best. Bonjour, pire bafouche français. <laughs> yes. Yes. Next time on Dejas and Dragons. Iron and Argon are government control. There's no fear. I'm gonna try to sit with Nelson Jr. This chair is taken. I'm faster than you! What are you guys doing here? You dropped your papers! Those are important! I knew that! That's what I said! I told you! Get back to school. Mom and Dad are not gonna be happy. Fine! Go, Shad! <laughs>